here with a new episode of Soul Knowing Secrets and this is Steve Howe, an absolute legend of progressive rock and the guitar and another one of my favorite players. I've been a Steve Howe fan since I was a teenager in high school. I've always loved Yes and I love the Steve Howe, you know, 70s era and I also love the Trevor Rabin, you know, 80s and 90s era too. I'm just a big Yes fan. But Steve Howe is a legend, a great guitarist, very unusual stylistically because he's not your normal kind of blues influenced rock guitarist. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, so this episode is going to tap into some of the secrets and playing habits, and there's some great stuff hiding in this episode. So here we go. So Steve Howe's been on the scene since around 1964, and if you check out his influences, you know, the musicians and artists that influenced him musically, it's an interesting assortment, and he's also studied classical and flamenco and jazz. But the first thing you're going to notice is you don't have your standard names. There's no Chuck Berry or Hendrix or Clapton as far as his influences. So he's coming from a totally different direction and he has all these wicked, you know, tricks and ideas up his sleeve. But here's a list of some of his influences. So most people associate Steve Howe with the group Yes, even though he wasn't a founding member and they had released, you know, two albums before he joined. But then he definitely was in the mix, you know, around 1971 with the Yes album. That was his debut with the band. He continued until like the early 80s. And of course, Trevor Rabin came in when they revamped the band in the 80s. But um, it's interesting because Steve's worked obviously with Yes, also Asia, GTR, and a whole bunch of other people. So here's an image with some of the people that Steve's worked with in his career. So I wanted to share this because it's really cool. And if you've never seen the gatefold, you know, vinyl album of Steve Howe's solo album from 1979, the Steve Howe album, I have a copy of it right here. This is so cool. And I wanted to show this because on the inside, when you open the album, you can see right there, there's Steve Howe's rig and all the guitars, you know, instruments that he used on this album. And then down below, he actually indicates like which song used which guitar. And I wish there were more albums like this, like the Van Halen albums and Zeppelin, the Beatles and stuff. Because it's so cool to listen to the album and then you can actually hear and pick out like where, you know, a certain guitar is used. That's really cool. And then as far as Steve's actual soloing secrets, the things that he typically likes to do on the guitar and licks and phrases and playing habits and stuff like that. Here's an image with some of Steve Howe's elusive soloing secrets. And after working with this episode, if you'd like to dive even deeper into Steve Howe's universe, I did have a lesson with Guitar Player Magazine, which is right here. And it was Steve Howe's Fretboard Geometry. That's from the September 2018 issue with Tosin Abasi. And I was honored to put that together to tribute to Steve Howe and his playing. So the music and examples in this episode actually came from three different Yes albums, and I was targeting and hitting very specific things. And, you know, once you work through this episode, you're definitely going to come away with a whole bunch of different ideas and moves and strategies on the fretboard. And that's a big thing with Steve Howe's playing, is it's hard. Like, you know, you really have to put some effort and some thought into what you're doing, because his music's not easy to play especially when he's dancing around the fretboard and twisting and moving, you know, in different positions and stuff. So anyway, here we go. The opening jam, that was really just me playing around with Worm. And Worm is the third section of Starship Trooper, which is from the Yes album. 
But Starship Trooper has three movements or sections, and Worm is that third section. And I love Worm. It just rocks. And it's really basic, but there is a chord curveball, like right in the middle of that chord progression. So it starts here. Just think of like a cowboy C with that G note on top on the high E, and then relocate that right here. And your third finger's playing a G, so that's G major right there. And then you're gonna move that here. And now you're basically playing, you know, the sixth fret, and that's gonna be E flat major. It just so happens it aligns, and that's E flat major. And then you're gonna move it down here, and that's C major, right? So it's a three chord progression, G, E flat major, and C major. And then you hear like the, the fifth is put in the bass, so now it's G over D. That's, you know, E flat over B flat. And of course C over G way down there. Right? But uh, that chord progression, you know, the G and the C are diatonic, so that's okay. And they, they fit together, or work well together. But the oddball is that E flat major. That's a curveball right there. And it's definitely going to force you to do something different when you're playing over that chord progression. So let's talk about that a little bit. Of course, there's some licks. I was playing some of the authentic licks from it like that. from Worm, and then I started to do something a little different, and I want to talk about this, because we're basically approaching how to play over that chord progression, because you really can't just play one scale. It's a non-diatonic chord progression. That E flat screws everything up. So, you know, in the beginning, we're basically playing over G major, right? So check this out. It's basically a pentatonic strategy here. So there's, you know, G major pentatonic right here. Right. And when you hear that chord change to E flat major, then I'm actually changing to E flat major pentatonic. Right? And then you hear it change to C, and then I switch it to C major pentatonic. Right? So it's G major pentatonic, E flat major pentatonic. And then C major pentatonic. And I love, you know, hearing that. And Steve definitely is a master of that, where he'll, you know, set up a chord progression and then kind of navigate and weave between the notes that he needs and targets, you know, just the right notes at the right time, like that. And then you hear the chord change. And then again. And you could actually just do that with regular arpeggios. You know, there's G major. And there's E flat major right here. And then there's C major hiding right there. And I love finding stuff like that too. G major, E flat major, and C major. something to think about. Now this targeting over a chord progression is very common in Steve's playing style. And up next is a section from Yours Is No Disgrace from the Yes album. And here he's targeting, you know, arpeggios over a chord progression that's changing. Like this. <laughs> like that. So right there, it's basically outlining uh, B flat major to A flat major, and then C minor, and then B flat major again. So that first one right there, it's implied, you know, B flat major like this. Like that, and you want to end on that G up there. And then move down a whole step and do the same thing in A flat. So it's kind of a stretch, but you're doing that. And then move up here, and that's basically C minor. And then right there, there's B flat major like this. patterns 
like that because it's stretchy and it's moving around, kind of chasing after that chord progression. And that's a good workout for your pinky too, just sitting there and doing that. <laughs> Next is the opening from Long Distance Runaround from the album Fragile, and I love this. It's just so unusual and weird. It sounds like a robot or an alien talking or something like this. <laughs> kind of hitting like this implied like E diminished kind of thing um, in the beginning like that you know kind of but like that and that's kind of based around C kind of so it's just this melodic kind of finger twisting weird part like kind of doing a pull off right there right here and then right there and right there and right there and then you just loop that whole thing again If you're looking for a song that's a total guitar workout, check out the Eternal Classic Roundabout from Fragile and you'll find sections like this. <laughs> and crazy so you're doing you know it's it's two groups of three right there this b c d f sharp g a on the g and the d string and then you're changing the root notes it's basically moving from c to b a to g f sharp and you're just making your way down to that e for that part but you're doing this so just do a rolling you know hammer on on the g and on the d that C note at the end twice and then do it again and end on B once and then do it again and end on the open A once and then do it again and on that G right there on the low E third fret and then do it again and then end on the second fret that F sharp on the low E and then it moves into that next part like this Steve gets jazzy and this next idea came from Perpetual Change which is from the Yes album and somewhere around 4 minutes and 14 seconds you'll hear this lick. <laughs> So he starts off with this uh, chromatic kind of pull-off there on the B string from D to B, like that. Grab that G note on the G string and then pull off this E to D on the D string. Grab B and slide shift that to C, like this. Right, and you're doing... And you're gonna grab that 
that uh, D to E, then you're grabbing this G, uh, slide that back to F sharp, grab E, and then you're gonna slide F sharp to G all the way up to this B right there, like this. <laughs> that B note then you're gonna basically do another uh, chromatic you know kind of pull off right there and you're starting on that G down to that E and then move the G string and do it right here and then move the D string and do it again right there and then you hear this kind of shift between that G and A and it kind of ends on that F sharp so really slow it's something like this Next up's a section from the obscure fan favorite Machine Messiah from the album Drama. And here we're catching Steve doing this really interesting octave linking kind of fretboard shifting idea. And something like this. One more time. So we're in the key of E right there. And he's doing this riff in E. sharp and G here and then go down an octave and do it right there and then do another octave right here and go down another octave right there and that's really tricky and definitely Steve does all kinds of stuff like this where he's racing and shifting and moving like that and that definitely will keep you on your toes or your fingertips the course of that song it actually moves that riff to F sharp and he does it again in F sharp and he does it again in G and there's a big one in G like this and that's a big handful so that's G right here and then F sharp right here your hands and fingers busy. All right, the last example actually comes from the song Heart of the Sunrise from the album Fragile, and I think this is my favorite Yes song, or definitely one of my favorite Yes songs. And of course it has that really aggressive kind of octave shifting riff, and then at the end of that section there's this really interesting melodic phrasing from Steve, and I've always liked it, like this. <laughs> got this really ultra aggressive you know single note riff in the beginning it's in G sharp like this and right there you're basically moving up chromatically and then you're gonna do it again an octave higher right here and then guess what we're gonna do right there you're gonna do it again an octave higher right here going backward you know chromatically and then do it again right there and then go back to where we started and right there after that F sharp you're gonna hear this right right here a little trill there at the end and then you hear these really you know just accented heavily you know, those three notes kind of hit there. And this little uh, hammer-on pull-off. 
And of course the song moves into a completely different section right there. But I love that where it's all in your face and super aggressive and then it turns into like this dream world. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Soloing Secrets, this look at Steve Howe. Definitely a very influential and legendary, you know, prog rock guitarist. And we didn't even talk about his acoustic stuff. We just focused on the electric side. And then when you switch over to Steve Howe's acoustic side, I mean, it's like a whole other universe just waiting over there. Phenomenal musician, phenomenal guitarist, a legend. And I think more people should talk about Steve Howe and the music of Yes, you know, in today's world. It's brilliant music. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.